Well, for more on the price of a university degree, I spoke to financial literacy expert Matt Sapaula. He's a member of the Chairman's Council and a co-owner of the PHP agency. And I started off by asking him how student loan debt is affecting relationships. Usually in most relationships, one of the biggest arguments that most people have, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, parents, is usually about finances. So it's a trickle-down effect, not just from the, par uh, from the students, but to the parents, if, especially if they're uh, co-signers in a lot of those loans, but also it's a trickle-down in moving to the first apartment, buying the first car, getting the credit card, and moving on with life. And we saw that from SunTrust, uh, they did a study and they found that one in eight relationships blame, literally blame student loan debt as one of the reasons that their relationship fell apart. Is there a reason, do you think, why this isn't being highlighted more? You know, it's one of those things that uh, are very near and dear and very closely guarded by a lot of people. Dealing with personal finances is a very embarrassing topic for a lot of people. Here's why. They figure that going through college and master's degree and PhD potentially, they've accumulated all this debt and realizing that the income that they were supposed to be making isn't enough to suffice the servicing of that debt. And they're thinking to themselves, oh my gosh, did I really make a mistake? And how people handle those financial situations, getting up every morning, stressed, underburdened, owing everybody else, besides tucking money away for themselves, is very stressful, especially for a single person, let alone a couple. And it really is enough to keep you up at night. If you look at the average outstanding balance for a college student, you're looking at about $34,000. And that's jumped 62% over the last decade. And that's according to a report by Experian. What is it that is continuing to drive these college costs so high? Well, the colleges themselves, I think you know, one of the biggest scams going on in America today is rising costs of college. You think about all the things that they've done, all the, all the fundraisers that they do, the fact they get subsidies from the government, state government, state, uh, federal government, and yet they're still philosophy. charging students twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year in college. It's, it's really ridiculous. And I'm thankful that I enlisted into the Marine Corps to avoid a lot of student loan debt. My wife got a four-year scholarship to play softball uh, at the University of Pittsburgh, avoided student loan debt. And so just to think that the average student, say, one, two generations of people going through school, waking up every morning and having to deal with this issue, it's, it's, it's really crazy. And it can certainly weigh on people in different ways. We see that these rising college costs can also have more effect on some of these other socioeconomic issues. For example, when it comes to the wealth gap in the long term, we know that women bear the brunt. They carry the heaviest load of the student debt, and they also have a harder time paying it back. What are some of these longer-term implications? I think the longer term implication is realizing that go going to college and looking to be financially secure just because you have a college degree and hopefully get a job, I think that conversation, that iteration is over with. Listen, if you want to go to be become a scientist, you want to be involved in technology, you want to get involved in engineering, medicine, maybe those are the things that you need to go to college for. But if you want to be financially secure, maybe taking a technical school, maybe taking a vocational school. Listen, I don't have any student loan debt. I went to the military. Uh, my wife and I have a seven seven figure income. Our CEO of our company, multi deca millionaire, all without student loan debt. So I think the rethinking of actually going to college to think that you're going to be financially secure with a job is over with. And some people, a lot of economists have even said that this is potentially a bubble. Are we heading in that direction? It's definitely heading in the direction. Here's why. It, according to current laws, that if you need to file bankruptcy, if you can't even afford to pay your car loan, if you can't even afford, afford to pay your mortgage, if you're able to get approved for the loans to begin with, and you file bankruptcy, you cannot file bankruptcy to student loan debt. It is going to stick with you for the rest of your life. And if people can't afford to pay it, uh, and they're not going to pay it because they can't discharge it through bankruptcy, guess what's going to happen? Pop. So a lot of people are wondering then, what is the government doing about this? How is the Trump administration handling this issue? You know, I think the Trump administration is looking at these things in, in many different areas. They're looking to change the uh, public service employee debt forgiveness laws. Uh, they're looking at ways to uh, change out how you can refinance and consolidate loans. I think even the, uh, the, uh, the student loan ombudsman even resigned because he realized that banks, institutions, and governments are really against the consumers, the ones borrowing the money. And so, you know, if, if government or this, this uh, bureau cannot be on the side of consumers and they're unwilling to change, I'm out of here. Now, according to the 2015 American Student Assistance Survey, 76% of respondents said that having a, a perk such as student loan repayments would encourage them or influence their decision to join that company. What should or could companies do to really help offset some of this debt? I, I think it really is a systemic issue. I think uh, colleges overall have to really figure out why are they charging students so much for college? Why is education so expensive, right? 
uh, especially if they're hoarding all this money at the colleges themselves. So that, to me, that's an argument there, number one. Uh, number two, in terms of companies, uh, working together would make sense. I'm, I'm talking about interest rates that make sense. And I don't think people themselves should be accelerating the, uh, the repayment of the student loan debt because it's one of those pieces that, like a mortgage, that could be deducted in terms of your taxes, tax deductible over a period of time. So that's one area of debt, student loan debt, uh, uh, student loan debt for a matter, that should not be rushed to be paid off. So do you think we'll see more companies doing this, adding it as a perk as they do with health insurance or a 401k retirement package? I think that has to be how companies are going to help. Because if I'm looking to get a job, uh, that's one of the things on my mind. Can I get this job to pay off all my debts? But if they're allowing 401k health benefits, that's a great perk for them to consider. I like to see capitalism, free enterprise, and uh, uh, American businesses adjust uh, to current times.